Hello, hello, everyone. Okay, let's see, I'm trying to share. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Let me try and see if I could um, put on my PowerPoint. This is open. There you go. Hello, thank you for joining us today, this afternoon, and thank you for to ACC for get, allowing me to present this, present this presentation to you all this afternoon. I'm sorry I won't be able to, I'm not there with you in person, but me, some folks are already there right now. Um, good afternoon, my name is Chris Ritualo, and I am the Senior State and Community Engagement Specialist with AARP. Joining me today is my colleague, J.R. Pujita, who will be managing the chat room as well as posting some of our, our links in the chat room. So if he gave you the wrong link, please blame it on him, okay? <clears throat> make myself really tiny in the corner. Now in this section, we're going to cover a lot of ground. So you learn about using your skills in many ways, uh, seeking a lot of educational opportunities, crafting your personal brand. We've heard about branding. So this is something that we really want to learn about. Networking and updating and age-proofing your resume. Now, it is really challenging to be looking for a job, particularly this time. Now, even in the best of times, job searches can be very, very frustrating. I know that. I've been doing it for years and it's like really, really frustrating. However, there are things you can do to help you achieve your employment goals. You know, as a job seeker, it is a really good idea to nurture your network, market yourself and define your unique value proposition. Now, in the next section, we are going to focus on the latter, which is exploring specific ways that you can take inventory of your current skills, figuring out which are most marketable and pursuing any missing skills that might help you begin the next part of your career. Now, employers look for skills in two categories the hard skills and the soft skills. Hard skills are, is also referred to as, or it's also known as work skills. Hard skills are the ones that are required to do the job, such as if you're into IT, like Sean, he's, um, if you have network security, that's called uh, hard skills or work skills. Accounting, marketing, Data analysis or graphic designs, those are called hard skills. And these skills are typically learned and quantifiable. Now you can earn this through uh, degree or certification or at least point to a course on a transcript showing that you received training in a particular area. Or you can point to jobs you held that required those same skills. You know, I don't have a degree in accounting, but in my past job, I was doing a lot of accounting work. So I can point that, that is a hard skill. Now, soft skills, on the other hand, are more subjective and harder to quantify, such as in abil the ability to, to communicate clearly, solve problems, and managing your time, and be a, a team player. In many ways, these skills, these soft skills, which include your outlook and attitude, are gauge upon on how well you fit in at work. Employers want to be sure you'll work effectively with your coworkers, your supervisor, and the organization's clients, or with the, in the ARP, the members, or the volunteers. How do we work with them? How do we work with them effectively? They also want to be sure that you can think on your feet and can make smart decisions. Now, even with the increased use of computers in the workforce and the recruitment process, human skills 
are actually hotter than ever. And job seekers want to be competitive, that are competitive should really focus on those soft skills, such as your persuasion and negotiation. So focus on soft skills rather than the hard skills. Hard skills, I believe, can be learned. Soft skills is something that we already have, okay? All right, I'm gonna talk about transferable skills. Now, even if you're a plumber or a teacher today, that may not end up being your title in your next job. As such, you'll want to make note of the transferable skills that you bring with you. Now, if you are switching industries, you're redeploying skills <clears throat> that you already have in place. For example, most soft skills are transferable to a new industry. Soft skills, we talk about that. Hard skills can be transferable as well, especially technology skills. And depending on the job you are applying for, you may want to, uh, to highlight Microsoft Office if that's what they're requiring you to do. You know, you want to highlight that Microsoft Office. Highlight if you have experience with Google Suite, uh, collaborative software, experience with Zoom, like we're doing right now. You know, nowadays everybody's using Zoom or Microsoft Office team. Highlight those. Now we have learned the difference between soft skills and hard skills. And we also considered which of those skills would be uh, considered transferable. That is, we could bring them with us from one job to another job. Let's say JR wants to apply for a different job at the University of Davis. He has to look for skills that he can transfer from ARP to UC Davis. Now, the final type of job skills that we will cover in this presentation are those skills which you do not have yet. Developing new skills demonstrate flexibility and agility. Talk about being your own cheerleader. We must remember that, that uh, job changes are very common and very doable. Even within the organization, job changes happen all the time and they're very common and they're very doable. And having a growth mindset, which help us stay optimistic as we search, you know, a growth mindset is a uh, flexible mindset. It is the notion that everyone can learn and grow no matter what their age or ability. So the, it doesn't matter how old you are, if you're in your 20s or your 60s, you can always learn and grow. Now that we've taken about our inventory of our skills and identified the type of mindset we want to achieve, let's take a look at the many ways to learn new job skills. So now remember, if you have paper and pen in front of you, write down your hard skills and your soft skills because you will use those when you're creating your resume or your, during the interviews and stuff. Now job seekers should consider both formal and informal learning opportunities to develop new and needed skills. And we're going to take a look at those, okay? In addition to the informal learning opportunities that we just talked about, colleges and universities or online school can also offer traditional educational options. This can range from taking a few courses at a time for professional development, uh, or a series of courses at a time to obtain a certification or pursuing a formal degree. You know, when I went, I am a certified aging in place specialist. I actually took the certification. I took the class, a two day class. I took the test at the end. And that's another learning opportunity that I've taken. Um, and I've added that in my resume. And, you know, it helps with your, with the work that I'm doing and the, the aging industry, so it really does help. Now, community colleges, I'm not sure if we still have many of those around, but community colleges are 
an excellent resource to start with for, when pursuing uh, traditional educational opportunities. Are, as they are oftentimes um, conveniently, look, the location is very convenient for many of us. It's very low cost or free, and they provide a flexible list of offerings during the day, nighttime, weekend, and online. I actually took some uh, photography class at uh, the, uh, the state here, this college here, um, and I did that on the weekends only. Now, some community colleges have partnerships with local employers that are looking to the community college to train on a particular skill set that the employer can hire these folks after the training. Now check with your local community college to find out if they have this type of arrangement. Let's talk about my favorite part, which is of course the informal learning options. Informal learning options are those that are outside the traditional realm of, realm of a college or university. Obtaining new skills informally can benefit job seekers during their active job and interview process, okay? If they're searching for new jobs, obtaining new, school, new skills can really benefit you. Consider uh, taking shorter courses and certificate programs that are tailored to specific skills or job functions. LinkedIn offers a lot of those ones. You know, if you want to learn, if you want to have a certification on project management, I think it just costs a few hundred dollars on LinkedIn. They have those. Um, they also have computer coding, coding bootcamp or an online courses at Udemy, edX or Coursera, Coursera. If you already have a degree, like many of you here probably already have a degree, consider checking with your alma mater career service department, like say JR again, if he graduated at Sac State, they can always go back and look at their career service department. They may offer free workshops to all the alumni, you know, and or they offer job skills that you could add to your resume. <clears throat> now, whenever you you search for new opportunities, beware of common scams and frauds. Be extremely cautious about giving out your credit card or bank information. Some swindlers or some fraud uh, scammers will say that you have a job, that, but they need to pay a fee for your application, training materials, or the certification. But once you have given out the sensitive financial information, they can use it to make fraudulent purchases and commit other crimes. So, Avoid those. When they are, start asking for money, run away as fast as you can. Beware of pre-screenings. You may see advertisements from companies claiming to be employment agencies that can offer you job placement with major firms. If you set up a quick interview with them, so if this is like, hey, come by here, we'll talk about with you to you, with you for five minutes, we're gonna give you a job right away. Now, what can happen, unfortunately, is that the people you speak with collect your personal data and sell it to other marketers. Now, it's called a lead generation. It's a practice called lead generation. That's why you should always research a company before you give out your information. Now, remember, if you can show a hiring manager that you're expanding your skills, it demonstrates a growth mindset, in which is what job seekers should strive to have. If I applied for a job here at ARP on advocacy, and they said, Chris, um, you don't have any advocacy experience. So I think what I would do is look for some skills, um, figure out a way I can have that experience. You know, adding new job skills to your resume is a must do for any serious job seeker, seekers. Now let's, talk, let's look at some traditional ways to obtain new skills. 
Now, experiential means learning by doing. So the first bullet is experiential education. This is an education that allows you to experience job specific types of challenges and tasks so that you can obtain the needed skills. This can include adult internships. They really call it returnships. And return to work programs such as Path Forward, Reach Hire, and I Relaunch. Now to locate adult internships in your area, you can just go ahead and insert adult internships on a job board. So if you're on a job board, Type it in, type in adult internship, and it will, this should be able to, if, you, if it's available, it should show up. Another way to learn something new and obtaining new job skills is by volunteering. AARP is always looking for volunteers. Now, it can also help uh, plug the, the, if you have gaps in your resume and, you know, the, the volunteering can really help that with that. And they also expand your network. We have a few folks here in our um, class today that are volunteers with ARP. Thank you for your great work, by the way. Though some volunteer opportunities might be different or limited due to what has happened in the, with the coronavirus, there's still other ways to volunteer your services and staying sharp, you know? You could do an online. If you're still not comfortable going out there doing an in-person volunteer work, you can do an online volunteer opportunity, such as if you have um, skills on tutoring, training, or mentoring lower skilled workers, you know, things like that that you could probably still do. Now, in ARP, we have this thing called ARP. If you go into ARP.org virtual volunteering, you can find some volunteer opportunities uh, at the start. Experiential education and volunteering are just the two many ways that you can earn new and valuable job skills. Let's explore some more. A lot. All right. Just like uh, the big company, make sure that uh, their mission that they make sure that their mission statement, the website, and marketing materials are of course cohesive and tell the story of their business. Sometimes that's what they call it, the brand. ARP wants to help you do the same thing. You've got to create your own personal brand. Sometimes, well, actually, this is called personal brand. Now we'll look. Take a look at what that means in the coming slide. Let's talk about elevator pitch. When you go to an elevator sometimes, when someone you don't, never, don't know comes up to you and says, hey, what do you do? That's, and then you have to create your own elevator pitch. Elevator pitch is a short introduction, usually about 30 to 60 seconds. You know, that's how long the elevator will go down. <laughs> That highlights what makes you unique. It also can demonstrate the value you can bring to a company or an organization. It really is great to develop this so that when you get an interview, you have an immediate response to tell me about yourself. You know, think about that for a minute here. Think of something that you, if I came up to you, hey, Beatrice, what, tell me about yourself. Think of something really fast, you know, you know, give him your name. I manage the Asian Pacific Islander for ARP. I work for ARP. I've been working for ARP for 20 plus years. Right now I'm managing the Asian Pacific Islander community work as well as the LGBTQ plus community work. It's really 30 seconds right there, or 60 seconds. Now think about two or three things you do really, really well. This will be uh, the qualities or skills that are so fundamental to who you are that doing them is completely natural. Once you have identified these things, come up with examples on, of how you've done that in your work life or your volunteering life or in your day-to-day -day life. 
by using these qualities and example, it should be easier for you to talk about your strength and accomplishment and, and without hesitation. Now, because these things are, you, you truly believe about yourself, you know, so it's easy. It should be easy to talk about it. For instance, being creative, reliable, dedicated, and or motivated are, are the things you want to highlight during your elevator pitch. Also emphasize concrete accomplishment in your elevator pitch, such as I was able to grow uh, the volunteer program by 75% without additional budget. You know, something like that. I was able to recruit 12 volunteers in two days. You know, that's really, really good. So that's something that you should highlight that in your elevator speech. Networking may sound really daunting, especially if you are very introvert like me. But it just means connecting and communicating with businesses and people. Put your out put yourself out there. Now, if you connect with companies and the players in your industry, it can demonstrate to recruiters that you are really engaged with their organization and that you are active in the industry. Just think of some, some ways on you can build your network. Please, if you have any question, um, go ahead and put it in the chat room or if you are in person, we will uh, get those questions from you in a little bit. Now let's take a look at some of the most common way to build your network. Connecting within your industry is a great way to start networking with other like-minded people. Meetups can be, can be either be virtual, and many are right now, especially these days, or of course in person. Locate these opportunities by, by looking for career transition skills or events. Um, you can also search for industry specific terms on social platforms like Meetup or Eventbrite. Conventions and conferences, both virtual and in person, like JR went to uh, JACL, the Japanese American Convention in Los, Los Angeles last week. That's one of the things that really helps you with your career search, conventions and the conferences. I was able to meet many people and he put his face out there and his name out there and people will remember that. Um, things like alumni events are also excellent way to, ways to network. Um, search again, once again, for your specific field to locate this opportunity. So if you go to Eventbrite, look for some sort of a meetup or some sort of a get together networking. Many of those are usually free. Now, many companies maintain online talent communities that you can join either by directly applying for a job there or by filling out a short form. Now, if there are companies that are specifically targeting in your job search, See if they have a career section on their site and whether or not they have a join our talent community option. I'm sure I've seen those in AARP a website. I've seen them at ACC website, UC Davis, MUD. I've seen those um, where it says join our talent community or their career section. Usually you provide um, your name, your contact information, your career areas you, uh, you are interested in in your resume. Um, you can also get updates from the company on open positions, career events, and so on. A recruiter may even reach out to you if a job comes up that could be a fit for you. I get a lot of those actually, but they always are saying three months temporary job, you know. Networking through social media is also a vital component of today's job search. You know, upward of about 92% of recruiters use social media to find job candidates. 
And they also use social media to validate candidates' professional identity and work history. Now, your online presence can help you or hurt you in your job search. For example, it can highlight your personality and qualifications to show that you could bring what you could bring to the, to the organization, to the workplace. It can also allow employers to learn things about you that might not want them to know. You might not want them to know. This is called the social media footprint. One easy way to find out your social media footprint is to type your name into a search engine to see what pops up. If you get anything that you do not want a prospective employer to see, try removing it from wherever it's posted or adjust your privacy setting so it doesn't show up in a public search. You know, I have Facebook. I have two Facebook. One is a fun Facebook. The other one is work Facebook. So the work Facebook is kind of like just all about work. The fun Facebook has a different name that people will never know it's me. So I created two Facebook, one for work and one for personal. Try doing that. Something that they can, you know, identify who you are in your other Facebook. All right. Don't forget about your uh, personal connection outside of your professional life. If it feels appropriate to do so, reach out to your neighbors, your past coworkers and friends to let them know that you're looking for new opportunities. If I'm looking for new opportunities, I could probably reach out to my old colleague that now works for um, Area Agency on Aging and find out if they have any new opportunities that I could qualify or apply for. Now, in addition to making connections in your industry and, you, and on your social networks, leverage your existing personal connections is really a good way to start with networking. Connect with any current and former coworkers on social media and reach out to friends, family, and neighbors. You never know who they know who might be able to help you in your job search. Many of my co my friends and coworkers actually usually send me, hey, look at this, this sounds like a good job, you know? So leverage those online friends. Now, the more connections you have, the better your chances of discovering that a friend of a friend of a friend is hiring for a job that's perfect for you. Now that we have covered the basics of networking and connecting with others, let's move on to the next topic, which is, of course, job search. Job search today have changed a lot from the days of the printed resume. Today's job search must be, you must be prepared for multiple rounds of phone, virtual, and in-person interview. So let's explore that. Online job boards are our website that dedicated to connecting employers with potential new hires. Employers post open positions on the job boards and then job seekers search through listings and apply online. So much job openings out there. So you have to make sure you kind of like uh, narrow, narrow your search to find the jobs that are right for you, that's suitable for you. You're just looking for a remote work job, put it in there on the job search. Also be sure to set up automatic not notification on your favorite job board so that you can be notified by email of new postings that are relevant to you. Talk about really quickly about remote and virtual work. If you are interested on in remote or virtual work, be sure to add remote or virtual on your job search, okay? Um, include any uh, remote work experience that you already have on your resume and LinkedIn profile. Also figure out or list uh, casual experiences, which is work that you have done outside of a nine to five job. Let's say Jared likes to coach basketball um, kids after five. He can well, that's not remote, but in other words, at least you can put that in the resume. But if he manages a um, 
an organization or uh, association after five, he can also put that in there as part of his experience. Now, additionally, online classes or other remote training can really prove your tech skills and ability to work independently as and experience working with colleagues and clients in different buildings. Many folks nowadays, especially after COVID, prefer working at home independently. And so many folks are seeing or looking for jobs now that are remote or virtual. <clears throat> working with a recruiter really can help you focus your job search. You know, I did this long time ago when I lived in Alaska. I went through a recruiter to find me a temporary, well, to find a job. They got me a temporary job. But remember, do not pay, they, they, you should not pay a recruiter to find you a job. Recruiters are paid by the hiring employers if you get the job. Do not pay a recruiter. If you want to work with a recruiter as part of your job hunting strategy, Go for it. You can track them down by using the methods to the employee to find their candidates, uh, which is through networking, referrals from colleagues, and of course, social media. This is the good one here, preparing your resume. Now, even the most distinguished career can be overlooked because of a poorly formatted resume. You know, even if you are a $2 million CEO of an organization, if your resume is poorly formatted, it can be overlooked. Now, a resume that is lacking design, is aesthetics, will fail to guide recruiters to a clear narrative of your background. Now, to help you market yourself to prospective employers, Begin by focusing on standardizing your resume's overall design. Add features such as the header, the page numbers, and subheads to clearly define each section. Also work on giving the document more visual balance by separating your achievements from the routine tasks of your jobs throughout the work history section. Make it pleasing to the eyes. Now, these are just a few of the many things you can do to ensure that your resume captures the confidence and skills you built during your career. As you begin to revise your resume, if you have a resume, pull it out right now and you can look at it. Now, as you begin to revise your resume, keep in mind that the average recruiter spends 10 seconds or less looking at individual resume. Make sure that you have highlighted your core skills in a snapshot. Your resume should be no more than two pages and the design is simple and clean. Don't use fancy fonts, parts, graphs, or symbols and organize Important details with bullet points. Be, use, be sure to use action verbs in the present tense, in the present tense for your current job. So like if I'm working for, well, I'm working for ARP, I need to make sure I use present tense. I do this, I am the, you know, I work at the fair, but make sure it's present tense. Now, for previous jobs, use past tense. I organized, I worked, I recruited. Now, finally, the focus should be on your quantifiable achievement, not the tasks that you perform daily as a part of your job description. It has to be a quantifiable achievement. Remember, this is your opportunity to stand out from the crowd. Your resume speaks for you, so you have to make sure that you are sending the right message. So many of us, especially nowadays, many older adults are 
shifting gears or shifting careers, looking for a different job. I have a, co a friend that's been looking for a job forever. And his first complaint was, I think I'm too old to find a job. But of course, he doesn't want me to look at his resume. So I'd see if I could help. But maybe because he did not age proof his resume. Now, if you are really concerned about uh, facing bias during the job search, don't panic. There are many things you can do to showcase your skills and experience you've earned during your career. Now, the following tips will help you age proof your resume, okay? Employers care most about your recent work that's relevant for the roles they are filling. So give more details about the position you have held in the past 10 to 15 years. I've actually eliminated the jobs that I have done 15 years ago when I was working for the state of Alaska. I have eliminated that. So basically what you see in my resume are just ARP work. Now, the one exception to this is that being if you have a specific legacy skills that the employer is looking for, such as an older programming language, then you could probably put that in your skills. So remove the dates that are related to your work experience, educations, and certifications if they fall outside the 15-year window, window. So if I have received my uh, Google Suite certifications 20 years ago, I probably will just say certified Google Suite you know, without the date. Um, so at least they, it, it just age-proof your resume. Older workers or many workers sometimes are seen as lacking technical savvy. So be sure to ditch your, your old AOL account or Hotmail account. Use a Gmail address that incorporates your name. Likewise, be sure to highlight your technical skills. Let me go back really quick on this this email, you know, yes, you might have a Gmail account, but if your says, uh, make sure that use your name at your email address, like kritualo at gmail.com, not something that is kind of like um, love fitness muscular at gmail.com. You know what I mean? It has to be professional. The fact that you also know how to use my of office may no longer uh, noteworthy unless your role requires that advanced knowledge of Excel. So if they're requiring that, hey, we need somebody who knows Excel, advanced is advanced Excel, make sure you uh, highlight that in your on your skills. Now show employers that you've kept up with the latest tools and platforms that are related to your field. Okay. Finally, use Keywords. 75% of all online applications will never be seen by human eyes. Hiring bots, they're called the hiring bots, are the ones that are looking at your resume, no, your application. No, their job, the hiring bots' job is to collect, scan, and rank an employer's inbound applications. I wonder how much they're making though per hour. Now, to improve your resume's changes of making it past this digital gatekeeper and onto a human person, make sure your document includes the appropriate keywords. Sometimes if they say, looking for someone who can supervise volunteers, make sure you use those keywords, supervise. Put that in there. If they say manage, make sure your the word manage is in your resume. If a word or phrase repeatedly shows up in the job listings that you are interested in, once again, incorporate these terms into your resume. So every time, if you apply for a job, different jobs, different organizations, read the job description and use the words, the terms, and put it in your resume.
Now, along with all of the information that I have shared today, here are some additional resources for you to continue your learning. AARP has a wealth of information and resources for job seekers. Visit aarp.org forward slash work for more information. My colleague will put that link in the web in the chat room. Now, also to locate information that is local to you, which is in Sacramento, visit local.aarp.org. Also, www.aarp.org forward slash near you. Now, the AARP Job Board connects you with the employers who value your experience. You can customize your search engine, like I mentioned earlier, by entering a job title, keyword, company, city, state, or zip code. You can work from home with on a variety of websites, including remote.co, co, the work at home vintage experts, wavi.com. <laughs> now, also another website is called We Work Remotely, we work remotely.com and dynamitejobs.com. So if you look at it's in on our PowerPoint, just take a photo of that. Also, LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn a lot. And make sure you look in LinkedIn and look for a job. You know, on the LinkedIn, you can also change your profile that says looking for work or open to work. Put that in there so people can see like, oh, this person is open to work. Let me look at your, your um, profile. Now, I hope you really enjoyed this uh, presentation today or and learned something from today and the information and the resources are of value to you. We have reviewed about uh, the using your skills in new ways, seeking educational opportunities, crafting your personal brand. Don't forget the 30 to 60 second elevator pitch, networking, go out there, network, updating and age proofing your resume. Remember that many more AARP job seeking tips are located at aarp.org forward slash work, like what Jair has put, it, put in our chat room. Also, you can learn, you can visit learn.aarp.org to find links to other online events. Um, also, we also have a podcast called I Learned How Podcast Series and AARP's learning library where you have access to hundreds of interactive videos, online games, quizzes, and other learning um, classes that you can watch anytime. ACC offers a lot of classes, I believe, in ACC, so many. Um, you know, if you are flying to be a musician someday, maybe you could go to ACC and I learn how to use the ukulele. See? So, Check out community centers, your libraries for any free classes that they're offering. We have come to the end of our presentation today. Please, um, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Or if you are in the room today, please grab the microphone from Sean and he should be able to ask that question for you or grab the microphone and ask that question. Sean, do we have questions in this room? While he's looking for that, you know, AARP actually has a pre resume builder. I actually use the resume builder. Check, check, it. check. Yes, there you are. So we have the pre resume builder in, um, in AARP.org. Oh, but if you want more information, of course, you have to pay like $79 to build that resume for you, but they give you a pre resume builder. Okay, Chris, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. I can. Okay. Are there any questions? Yes. Um, you said learn something.com. Yes. What was it? Learn. Let me see. Here, just make sure I have the right one. <clears throat> um, it's learn.aarp.org. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, JR. Learn.aarp.org. Any other questions? 
Uh, I don't think there's any more questions right now in the room, Chris. Okay. We have one in the it? chat room. I, somebody said, I'm having difficulty finding a job that is part-time and not all weekdays for a senior. You know, part-time, you know, keep looking though. I know that some, if you don't drive, you know, I think Uber, I've seen folks, uh, older adults, we call them older adults instead of senior. When I was in San Diego, many of the drivers were seniors. If they're still able, if you're still able to drive, um, many of them were were drivers. Um, even um, customer service by phone, you know, those are the jobs that you could do. Um, big box company like uh, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's. I think they offer part-time jobs for older adults. They're always hiring. Uh, and I know that you guys are all in Sacramento, maybe uh, some grocery stores maybe are also looking for part-time workers. And I'm assuming Alfred, you, you are asking about supplementing your income, correct? Does the ARP still offer older workers program? Yes, we call it CSAP, the senior, See if we could find the website for you. You're familiar with that, JR? C-STEP. Yes, um, I put in the number and information into the chat. Fabulous, yeah. This is a senior community service employment program. I know that we have one in Sacramento and that's um, in partnership with ARP which is the CSEP or the Senior Community Service Employment Program. It's, a, it's actually a community service and work-based job training program for older Americans, older adults, okay? This is authorized by Older Americans Act. So they provide training for, uh, for low-income, unemployed seniors, and participants also have access to employment assistance through American Job Center. So, Make sure you take advantage of that. The phone number is right there. Thank you, JR. And yes, that's right. They're in Roseville. Um, yeah, there you can get training from them. That would be fabulous. You know, when I was starting school and I wanted to be um, to work in the office, um, instead of taking typing class, I actually did. Um, okay, there was a program that I used. Actually, it's a free program online and learn how to type. So I couldn't type at first. Eventually, I was because back then, not anymore, they're looking for how many words per minute do you type? I think it was 45 or 50, I can't remember. So that's how I learned how to type is online. So look at those, you know, try those, see if you can't type fast. Now they're looking for somebody who wants to type fast. Hone up your skills on online, um, even using the calculator. I learned that online. That's right. ARP job boards also shows which positions are part time. Anybody else have questions or comments? I hope that this is something that is quite helpful for everyone. To everyone. JR, maybe you can plug. Is the Community Heroes still open? It is. So AARP and the Sacramento Republic FC, which is our local soccer team, we are currently hosting a contest that ends on Monday evening. So if you are interested, know somebody who does outstanding volunteer work in the greater Sacramento area, please feel free to submit a nomination. The winner that is selected by the Sacramento Republic and ARP will receive a VIP experience at the last home game of the season, which is on October the 14th. Um, they will also be the team captain of the match. They'll have a VIP experience, which includes food and beverage to watch the game. They'll also be presented with a nice plaque during halftime. And Chris put the link for those nominations into the chat. Anybody 18 and over can be nominated. And again, we're looking to recognize outstanding volunteers in our community. Thank you, JR. So that web that website or the link that I sent, you can see the winner, the winners. 
and some of the work that AARP has done with Sac Republic, Sacramento Republic FC. And then Chris, I received a question uh, through private chat, a uh, okay. question regarding the AARP job board. Is it for AARP only? No. Uh, no, the AARP job board is open to anyone. You do not have to be a member and um, it's public. And again, that site was, um, I believe it was the first, one of the first ones that I put with jobs in it. Let me go back and pull that up. And also and the ARP job board is not just ARP jobs. I think anyone can post uh, jobs, open jobs there. So look at that and see um, if there's something there that you want to apply for. I'm not sure if monster.com is still around. That's the job where I found ARP. <laughs> That's not where I, I applied for this job where I am now at monster.com. Um, now I use a lot of the LinkedIn, LinkedIn, um, a lot of people use indeed, indeed. Yeah, that's right. So look at those, just do a big search, but remember, watch out for scammers fraud. Um, you know, if they are asking for money, run away. If a recruiter says, yeah, uh, you have to pay us and we'll find you a job, run away. If you don't pay a recruiter to find you a job. And actually, I think Alfred, try reach out to a recruiter, see if they could get you a part-time a job too, but make sure you don't pay them. Remember that because I found recruiter, I think back in the days, I'm not sure if you guys remember this, the Friday, Girl Friday, there was an organic company that called Girl Friday. That's where I, I joined and I was able to find a part-time job with them. And then, and then the other that. thing to also mention as far as part-time work goes, a lot of big companies are getting ready to do their seasonal hiring for the holidays. And I know some companies have actually posted, um, they plan to start doing recruitment uh, right here in August, which is right around the corner. And so that's also a great place to look, um, especially, you know, to get started or to get you going we find, before you find something a little more permanent. And then a lot of times, some sometimes these seasonal jobs that, you know, are part-time may lead into permanent part-time jobs too. So um, it's a great way to keep your experience and keep your skills fresh and also to, you know, earn some income as well. Right, supplement that income, especially on the holidays when everything is so expensive <laughs> all during holidays and everybody wants a gift. So yeah, and I think like Macy's, Macy's also always look for part-time workers during the holidays. Depending on where you want to work, you can go and look for part-time workers. I, I know that um, the baseball people, what do you call them? They are not Republicans. The River Cats. River Cats, they're always looking for part-time folks too that work during the game. So look at those and the opportunities that they have. The theater. You always look for part-time if you just want to work part-time job. I always wanted to work in a grocery store and just scan those products. My ideal job someday. Yeah, what is your, like, if you're not working for AARP, what kind of work would you do? What would I do if I wasn't working for AARP? I Something might- simple. Uh... Something simple. I might be a, a travel agent because I like to travel. And I'm very uh, into planning and organizing and saving money. And so I think that's what I would do. See, there you go. I just want to work at a grocery store. That's my thing. Maybe even bad food. <laughs> All right, any question? We will almost come to the end. I just want to thank ACC Senior Services, uh, Sean, for helping me today. You guys are the best. I've still been wanting to do an in-person um, presentation at, at ACC. We love our partnership with ACC. Uh, to Danny, of course, thank you for inviting us. And we will be back for sure. That we've been talking about doing more presentation in-person in the future. All right, thank you, Chris, so much for being here.
Thank you. And we will offer this again. Um, thank you, Sean. And if you have no, any more questions, please reach out to Sean or to myself. I'm going to put my contact information in the chat room so you can reach out to me. And I'll make sure they are answer. <laughs> All right, there's my email address. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.